going on guys welcome back to another lesson in swift for beginners in the last lesson we covered protocols and in today's lesson we're going to be picking up right where we left off and we will be covering strong versus weak in the context of memory management so let's right let's uh, jump right into things so let's start by removing all of this stuff that we have going on from the last lesson and let's change this to strong versus weak and get right into it. So before we actually go into strong versus weak, I want to preface this with a little uh, bit of an intro about memory and memory management. Seeing as this is an intro course uh, for beginners, I think that would be appropriate. So yeah. So when you create a variable in any program, whether it's in Swift or any other language, that variable needs to be stored somewhere for the duration that your program is running. And that variable gets stored in memory. So when you store something in memory, um, we need to specify programmatically when the, the code and the program is allowed and okay to get rid of that thing in memory. And that is kind of the nature of memory management. So if we create this variable called str, and it's equal to some string, we want the program to know when to get rid of this str in memory. In other words, when we are done using it, it, it would be ideal if the language knew like, okay, we're done using it at this point, so you can hence get rid of it, instead of having to tell the program in Swift, hey, I'm done with this, get rid of it. So back in the day, many years ago, um, the latter explanation that I gave where you had to tell the programming language yourself that you had to get rid of something in memory, um, you had to do that yourself. It was very manual. Nowadays, there is this concept, particularly in Swift and iOS development, called strong and weak variables. So first and foremost, how do we create a strong or weak variable? So we basically just prefix the variable with either weak or strong, notice it doesn't highlight. We can prefix it with weak, and if we don't have weak, the variable is strong by default. Now what the heck does that actually mean? So I'm gonna explain this with a kind of an anecdote, as I have learned firsthand that people understand it best this way. Strong and weak are two different ways to tell Swift what type of usage that variable will have, and as a result, when it's safe to get rid of it in memory. So imagine there's a kid holding a balloon. Let's say those are two different variables. There's the child, and then there's the balloon. There's a child class and balloon class. The And, and to specify, actually, the balloon is a helium balloon, so it's up in the air. The balloon would be a weak object, and the child will be a strong object. And the reason behind that is, if the child disappears, the balloon also disappears, because the child is holding on to it, and the, and the balloon will fly away, which is why it's important that it's a helium balloon. Um, but vice versa, if the balloon disappears, the child is still there. So the thing holding on to the balloon is the child. So if we translate that back to our example in code, a weak variable will be deleted from memory. We'll get what well, Swift will tell it to go away if there is no other strong variable pointing to it. So let's give another example. So imagine you're walking your dog and let's say your dog really wants to run away. Your dog is the weak, object and you the person holding the leash is the strong object and i keep saying object it is an instance of an object so it's a variable and if you go away the dog is going to run away both things are gone if the dog goes away you're still you're still strongly created so you're still there so by default things are strong in swift variables but if we if we want to make something weak what we do is we prefix this with the word weak and let's see an actual example of this. Let's say we have a class. Why is it yelling at us? Let's see, did they change it to put it up here? No, that's not correct. 
Okay, so let's actually see an example of this. So if we have a class called child, similar to our story, and we have a variable in here called balloon, let's say it's a string, we can make this weak because if we create an instance of this child, this is created strongly. However, if this was also created strongly, both things are strong. For the sake of this video and understanding strong versus weak, what we wanna understand here is once this thing goes away, we're no longer using it, everything that is weak that's connected to this as a proxy will also go away. Very similar to the balloon and child example. So why do we wanna do this? Why do we even care about this? Um, you can imagine on a mobile device, like an iPhone or like an Android device or any, any device in general, but especially on a mobile device, there are limited resources and there is not an unlimited amount of memory. So you really wanna be conscious of how much memory you're using. And this is a fundamental that I would highly and strongly encourage to understand and learn from the beginning, as this is extremely important in uh, interviews, it's a pretty pretty short interview question, and at a more senior level at, let's say, like Google or Microsoft or Apple, um, this is something, something that they focus on quite a bit in terms of performance. Um, so knowing how much memory you're using and utilizing the least amount possible to get your thing to work is a very good skill to have. So that's kind of why we care. Eventually, if we just keep using an unlimited amount of memory, we're gonna run out of memory and our program will crash. So that's kind of where I wanna end this video. Um, and before I do that, uh, maybe I should just explicitly kind of say it uh, and assume, not rather not assume, but any variable can be created weak or strong. Uh, so it could be an object, it could be a primitive, it could be a number, a string, uh, it could basically be anything. So with that being said, I will end the video right here. I hope you guys, I hope you guys learned uh, the difference between weak and strong. If I could clarify or answer any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments. Please do leave a like, subscribe, follow, um, share the course, and I will see you in the next video.